Hello, hello. Welcome back to Alpha Beta Soup, where we unpack Bitcoin using on-chain analysis. I'm TXMC, and in today's video, we will look at what happened on Tuesday, September 7th. We'll assess the likelihood that it was a flash crash in the futures market. If you're enjoying my content, please give this video a like. Please subscribe to my channel, and make sure you enable that bell icon so you know when I post another video. Let's get started. Coming into September 7th, there was a lot of volume in the futures market. In my previous video, I talked quite a bit about how the futures market works. And if you'd like to know more about that, I'll leave a link in the description below. On the morning of September 7th, Bitcoin came in with $13.3 billion of open contracts in the futures perpetual market. The perpetual futures market is the market that has the funding rate mechanism that we spoke about in my previous video that we use as a barometer for detecting how much leverage is in the system. By the end of September 7th, futures had fallen to 9.4 billion from the 13.3 they began at, which is about a 28 or 29% drop. That is a large drop, and it's one of the bigger ones we've seen this year. From May 18th to May 19th was another about 30% fall from 9.6 billion down to 6.3. This was the end of the full capitulation from the highs, and it started with the Elon tweet on May 12th about how Tesla would no longer accept Bitcoin as payment. This crash here was on the tail end of a larger macro drop in Bitcoin's price. Here, a bit earlier in April, this fall was over a period of days, but resulted in a similar amount of leverage being squeezed out of the futures market. This came after the Coinbase IPO here at the absolute top in mid-April. When we look over at the funding rate, which again is like a barometer for how much bias and leverage is in the system, you know, looking at this, from my perspective, this over here in August and September didn't look like a lot of leverage because when you see in the spring, we had two, three, and four times that, sometimes for days at a time, before there was any sort of correction. And so when I saw that we were at a quarter of that much leverage, it seemed to me that the futures market was in a healthier place. The learning for myself and other analysts is that a smaller amount of leverage on high volume is still a recipe for potential volatility. But what's more important, in my view, is not whether the futures market remains healthy. It's important for us to be aware of it and to properly anticipate when we might see volatility as a result of the futures market. But what will really tell the tale of Bitcoin's success and how we will know if the market is still in a good place is whether the underlying supply dynamics are still healthy and pointing in the right direction. So we'll take time now to go through a few things that tell part of that story. Where we will start is with the spent volume age bands. We looked at this chart in the previous video, and it's still relevant for this conversation. What I've filtered this down to is showing the volume of spent coins that are six months or older at the time of the transaction. So this is representing the volume coming out of older hands. We consider any coin over six months to be relatively mature as it starts to become statistically less likely to be spent after that threshold. And when you look over here to the right, yes, there is a small spike of activity here, but in relation to what six month and older volume can look like in a bull run, for example, here in November, December, and January, this is a blip on the radar and is almost insignificant. This is showing to me that what happened on Tuesday was not at all the result of older hands spending their coins and losing confidence in Bitcoin. It was the result of the aforementioned futures liquidation that you can see here. This is $4 billion. That is a non-trivial sum of leverage to be squeezed out. It did not manifest itself as spot spending by actual hodlers of Bitcoin. People who are sitting on a stack of coin for the long term, who see it as an investment, who see it as a store of value, those people's behavior was not shaken by the events on Tuesday. This chart is showing you two different levels of coin supply. The red line, the smoother of the two lines, is the total supply 
held by entities, that's individual people on the chain, that have one or less total Bitcoin in their possession. These are the small time sat stackers, the everyday person who is trying to roll Bitcoin into their personal wealth portfolio, who is trying to divest themselves from fiat, who is trying to get involved in the crypto space, people that don't have an entire Bitcoin. That is this red line. If you notice, it's in a nearly perpetual upswing. The gold line that we're looking at here is the supply held by entities that own at least a thousand Bitcoin. We consider these to be whales, big spenders, smart money, savvy investors, rich folks. This line has had a few larger entities taken out, so exchanges are not included in this, and some of the other mechanisms that miners use to sell, like the OTC desks, are not included here. This is just entities and small institutions that we don't have heuristically separated, and it represents the, what I call, true whale supply. If you'll see, these two lines here have not fallen over and gone down as a result of the price drop. Let me zoom in here. Again, the red line are the entities that only have one Bitcoin or less. The gold line are entities that have at least 1,000 Bitcoin. And what do you notice in the pattern of both of these? An uptrend. 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 For those of you who've been following along with my videos, what does that mean when we see these two supply lines going up? especially when you see it at a moment of weakness in the price. That is smart money buying the dip. That is not smart money capitulating. That is not old hands selling their coins into market strength to reset for the next cycle. This is conviction and confident investors buying coin at a 10% discount. That is what you're seeing on this chart here, and it represents an underlying strength in the supply dynamics for Bitcoin. This chart is one we touched on in both of my previous videos, and we're bringing it back now because it remains highly relevant. The blue line here is representing the illiquid supply in the system. This is representing the amount of supply being picked up by entities that are unlikely to sell any of their Bitcoin. These are the long-term holders, the strong hands, the hodlers, the sat stackers, the people who dollar cost average every week. These are the true Bitcoin loyalists. The orange line is representing the amount of supply that is not on exchanges versus the amount that is on exchanges. We touched on this in the previous video that from an on-chain perspective, Bitcoin being placed onto exchanges shows an intent to have them available to sell. And in a way, we can consider that bearish. We can consider those coins to be more liquid, more likely to be sold in the near future. Anything that is not on the exchange is likely in cold storage or in some kind of hardware wallet and shows an intent not to move those coins anywhere for the foreseeable future. We can apply a, a human behavior to the way that these entities behave over their lifetimes. If I zoom in here so we can get a closer look, note how the supply of illiquid coins and the supply of coins being taken away from exchanges have been growing ever since price started collapsing here in the summer. It's right around this moment here when we had a full capitulation of the market. Even though price sold off a bit more here as retail demand was extinguished, the people who hodl their coins who buy every month, who believe in Bitcoin as the future store of value, they started buying here and their positions have been growing and they have been taking coins off the exchanges the entire summer. And on this day, when we had over 10% of price liquidated in a matter of minutes, they saw an opportunity to buy more and take them off of the exchange. This sort of behavior is galactically confident. I can't overstate how bullish this kind of behavior is for underlying supply dynamics. It's important to say that when I speak about bullish market dynamics, when we're talking about on-chain, I mean at a macro level. On-chain analysis is not trying to tell you what price is going to do tomorrow or five days from now, but it can give you a glimpse into the next month quarter or year of Bitcoin's life, depending on the metrics you're looking at and your time preference. 
So it's important to remember for those watching that when I tell you the underlying supply for Bitcoin looks very bullish, that hodlers are stacking coins, that old hands remain confident, all of those things are undeniably true because they are showing themselves in the data. However, that does not mean that we will not see short-term volatility and potentially even another price drop. Those things are driven in the moment by technical factors, by speculation in the derivatives market, and by day-to-day -day confidence in the traders who are participating in the asset on a given day. There is no one tool for every job, and it's important in on-chain to look at metrics that are relevant to the perspective you're trying to form. I say all of this because in the last couple of days, myself and my colleagues have been fielding a lot of questions and confusion in the crypto community from folks that say, hey, you've been telling us the market looks great and then the price just dropped. That shows a disconnect between the expectation people have consuming this information and what it's actually telling us about Bitcoin. It's important for me to have you guys understand as my community that when I tell you positive sentiments in the data, it is meant to illustrate a longer term picture of Bitcoin. I can't tell you if price is going to drop 10% tomorrow. I hope it doesn't. But if it does, that won't change the overall health of the market unless we start to see things like illiquid supply suddenly reversing. That would mean that coins that normally don't get sold have started to change their minds. That means that people who we rely on to be the confident floor of price for Bitcoin have started to waver. And that does occur cyclically. You know, every couple of years, old hands start to sell. And then the, as price comes back up, they start accumulating again. That's a natural market dynamic. And that kind of thing is healthy. As I'm filming this on September 7th, it looks like Bitcoin's price is losing the 200 day moving average, which is this blue and pink line you see across here. The 200 day is a significant line in the sand for a lot of traders, and it can kind of be an oscillator for the overall bull bear cycle in a given asset. The fact that Bitcoin is losing the 200 day in the moment here, let's look at a one hour chart. Each of these candles now represents one hour. You can see here, this is September 7th. This was the flash in one hour, you know, price fell 6%. And, you know, we've been chopping around on this 200 day. It's kind of been acting like a basin. And sometimes it flashes below it and it gets bought back up. Now, on-chain is not going to tell you what comes of this price action. There isn't any kind of indicator that I can show you that's going to say that this price level here at 44,000 is the bottom or that this here at 42,7 is the bottom. I can't tell you those things. What I can tell you is that on a large scale, the people that need to hold Bitcoin for price to continue to appreciate and for this asset not to collapse are continuing to behave in the way they always have and in fact, have been increasing their holdings at a greater rate throughout the last couple of months. Could price retest one of these levels? Absolutely. You know, is it possible that we see it come back down here and test this previous peak right around 41 and a half? Very possible. But long term, Bitcoin still looks very healthy. And it's very possible that this just ends up looking like another higher low on the weekly time frame. It may take a couple of weeks for this to play out, but I show you all of this because it is important at all times to remain in a healthy perspective about Bitcoin and about what you're investing in. I'm not buying Bitcoin so that I can get rich next month. I buy Bitcoin over the long term because I see it as a wealth play for my family and as a security hedge against currency debasement. When I see price flipping around, you know, a few thousand dollars in a given day or week, that doesn't bring me great concern. What would give me concern is if we started seeing market players behaving counter to their historical on-chain trend. Price is looking a bit bearish in the short term. It's important to protect yourself, not to become overexposed in any type of trading that you're doing. If you are ever in doubt about the health of the market, Look at what the long-term holders are doing. Look at what the whales are doing. Look at what illiquid supply is doing. If those things are trending upward, then we're still in a good place. Follow me on Twitter at TXMC Trades. I post regularly. I put out a lot of analysis that's too small to fit into a video. 
I'm having a blast making these videos for you guys. I've been getting a ton of amazing positive feedback in the comments. I'm so appreciative of everything you guys are saying. I'm glad you're sharing the content and enjoying it. And I hope that you're finding value in the way that we're looking at Bitcoin. Please give me more feedback. Let me know if there's things you'd like to see me improve. And take care of yourself, friends. We'll speak again soon. Cheers.